What is up, Cole Crackers? It's literally been a few months since we talked about the gear that I'm carrying. So, right now, spring 2020 loadout. I was gonna say carry out loadout. <laughs> you get it. Now in the past, I have carried a lot of different things and I try to, every season, always change up my kit so I learn and explore new ways of doing things. But I must admit that from last fall until now, my kit has really stayed the same. Like I found this sweet spot with my gear and I've used so much gear in the past that like now this sweet spot is like, oh, I just, I wanna keep it like that. Now I did make small little changes into this kit, which we're gonna talk about, but I wanna show you what I'm carrying right now. Okay, so when it comes to my gear, I always throw on my belt knife when I first get out into the woods. So that's one thing that I always carry along with me. And then I also carry along my belt pouch because it just has some of them essential pieces of gear that I need in there. Now, some people don't like the whole belt pouch concept. They're just not comfortable to them. For me, I've always enjoyed it and I just feel like it's just my little kit that I need to have along with. So that stuff's like always just included. And then I have my backpack and my haversack. Now that might seem like a lot to people because they're like, I have a backpack, now I gotta carry a haversack. But here's my whole concept around with the haversack I'm um, carry. Sometimes I literally just take the haversack along if it's like a quick, short little thing. Um, I can get by easily with everything I need in here just for the day if I would want to. But what happens normally is you pack this up and then the stuff's overlapping. Like it's like double trouble if you pack the same type of stuff in each. So I normally let this pretty much empty and then I'll carry my food or my drinks into the woods with this thing. And if I don't wanna carry this, I roll it up because they fold up really nice and small and I just stick it inside my backpack. So when I am in the woods, if I need something to sit on, something to kneel on, I have that. Or if I'm gonna collect something, I can just grab this and use it. So we'll do a future video on my actual haversack loadout if I'm just taking that thing along, what's in that. But for now, um, we're gonna assume that that is normally just pretty much empty with nothing in it. Now we can get onto the good stuff, the backpack. So this is a Filson backpack. Yes, it's expensive, um, but it's nice, good, high quality. It's like the perfect size for me. Like I have not found a backpack that this size range that fits me, that's comfortable, like this bag. So um, I have been using this now for a while. You can see the nice patina it's getting. This is their tin cloth. So the stuff's basically never gonna wear out. It's only gonna get better with age. You can always re-wax this then if it feels like the waterproof is starting to leave it. But so far, I've had no problems with this at all. Big front compartment and a big back compartment for all your gear needs and uh, big heavy zippers and stuff like that. And it looks super traditional, so I love it. Now let's start in the front compartment. So front compartment, we just pop this thing open. Um, I have my signal flag in here and it's always good to have some type of rag along with you. So if you have to grab a hot pot or something, you're good to go. Notepad and pencil, compass, a bunch of different fire starting stuff. So this is an ExoTac lighter cover. I have some fire starters and I have some other type of fire starters I was playing around with. My ferro rod and then one of our utility blades. Okay, and then in the larger compartment itself, um, there are a couple things in here that sort of sit next to my backpack all the time, but I might not always carry them. One of those things being this small little pot. Now I usually use this as a drinking vessel um, more so than cooking in, but there is the option because it's metal that I can cook in this thing if needed. Um, but I don't always carry this, but it is right next to my bag. So if I think, hey, I'm gonna be doing something I might need it, I throw it in. And then one other item that I don't carry all the time, but I thought is important to bring here. So it says tool and repair kit. We do, I'm gonna show you that in a second, but this is just a hygiene kit that I carry along. So if I'm doing an overnight type trip, um, I take my hygiene kit. So these two things, aren't always in here, but uh, if I'm gonna think I need them, I just throw them in there. Stainless steel water bottle. The Coal Cracker Tool and Repair Kit. Um, so this thing itself, all the normal products you get in it from our site, but then I also have some bank line and some paracord jammed in there. So if I need any kind of cordage, it's there. And then we have another small little bag here, just a zippered pouch. This literally is like a catch-all for me. So I have an extra ridge line some extra matches, sharpening stone, my flint and steel kit, spoon fork combo, extra gear lube, 
a rip spool repair kit, and an awl. I also carry a full-size multi-tool. I think it's definitely a worthwhile thing to carry some type of pliers, um, but in this case, full size is definitely a way to go for the little extra weight you're gonna carry. Um, it just, it, they're so much better than the small little micro ones. And then I have my Olight flashlight. So I have the S1R baton, and then I have that same thing on a headlamp rig. So I do carry two flashlights. And then tucked way down at the bottom, which is a little bit obnoxious, but I've been using it so much recently for different stuff, is one of our oil cloth tarps. So I have that thing stuck down right in the bottom. See, they fold down nice and small. So I also have, with that oil cloth tarp, I have the um, ridge lines set up inside there. And then in the back, the good old gum blanket. So these things are great for just sitting around of course, laying on as a ground barrier. The biggest thing you need to remember with something like this, this is a kind of piece of gear you get that you really want to beat up. Like, it's made to block you in the dirt, okay? It's not gonna protect you from the elements, it's just gonna protect you from the moisture in the ground, the wetness on the ground, and don't be afraid to just hammer away at this thing. And then that itself is my entire loadout. Now, I know one thing that you might be thinking about this loadout. Well, what about all your sleep equipment? What about your food? What about medical stuff? So let's actually address that because these are questions I get asked all the time. So the reason I don't have any sleep gear along with me is because for this loadout, like I said, I try each season to like pick a theme and stick with it. I recently, and even going into now this springtime, I don't have a specific like, oh, I wanna try this. So I used to just go wool blanket for a while. Then I'd go sleeping bag. Then we were doing a lot of hammock camping, especially this winter. It was a lot of hammock camping with over quilts and under quilts. So I interchange that depending on the trip itself. So I'll give you some examples. A winter butt hang, <laughs> you need to take your hammock. <laughs> so that's what would go along with this kit itself. If we were staying in somewhere like the yurt or the wall tent that we were just sort of relaxed or more like by myself traditional type of camp, wool blanket or blankets, um, depending on what the temperature is, if I really wanted to like get back in touch with, you know, that authentic bushcraft, traditional outdoor kind of life. And then if it was just me and the guys and we're having a party and we're out in the woods and we're camping and it's gonna be cold, I mean, I'm grabbing a sleeping bag. So I, that stuff was literally very fluid. So I didn't add that to this kit because right now, and especially going into the spring, that's still my mindset around it is, depending on the situation, depending on the weather, depending on what's happening, is depending on what kind of sleep gear I'm gonna take along with me. But what I do think that I'm going to do for the future, and I would love to hear everybody's opinion on this, um, if you have done it, not if you haven't done it, don't, I don't want your opinion, <laughs> is just a thin ground mat, like a lightweight ground mat, okay? Um, and then also just use an over quilt over that. So on the ground camping with an inflatable ground mat, and over quilt because I've heard a lot of good things about that and I would like to give that a shot but I don't have my under quilts rated super low um, temperature and I don't have the right ground mat for that so I'm gonna have to get that set up and that's where I think I'm headed and that's the next thing I want to experiment with but if you have um, experience with that leave it in the comments below and then as far as food goes, the bag itself has a little bit of room in it yet, so if you have a day's worth of rations or two days worth of rations, you can fit it in there if you're not getting overly crazy with the food. Otherwise, I just take my haversack, which of course doesn't have much in it. I can stick all my food in there. Um, I can stick my beer in here if I need to, and I just can carry that into camp. So it works out really, really well um, that way, having this system set up like that. And then as far as first aid goes, because a lot of people like to carry first aid kits, and there's nothing wrong with carrying a first aid kit. I personally don't carry a first aid kit. Um, if I get a cut or I get banged up or anything happens, um, what I usually do is I just use some of the cotton material or I cut my shirt or whatever and I use that with some tape as a band-aid. Um, anything outside of that, if I was to like dislocate my finger or something, I sort of just wait till I get back home and, and deal with that. But adding a tourniquet if you're gonna be out long term is always a good idea. And then that's it. I mean, I have my, my basic loadout. So I have, if I'm just going out even for the day, I have a shelter type component. I have stuff to keep me dry off the ground. I have a bunch of fire stuff. And then I have a ton of repair items. If you really think about that, a lot of repair and a lot of items that we can make things with out here that we're gonna need to get us through until we can get back home or get ourselves to wherever we're going. So this is my current loadout. This is like, I don't know, it just I just really feel like I said at the beginning of the video, this is like the sweet spot in gear that I found that every little situation I run into, I got what I need, especially like with filming and doing a lot of YouTube videos like this. When I'm out, I grab this bag and I go and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna shoot this video. I'm like, 
I got it. So other than like big heavy ropes or a specialty ax or a specialty saw, I mean, everything is pretty much covered here that I personally need. And if it's not here, I can make do with the other stuff that I have, um, just with a little ingenuity. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm gonna do another video on what I care if I just grab that haversack and go, because I do do that sometimes. Um, so I will show you that. But for now, it's the backpack, the empty haversack, and then everything that's in the backpack. Plus, if it's gonna be an overnight, what my sleep gear is. My sleep gear, if you're wondering, because you're thinking, well, how does it fit in here? I either use my bedroll straps and I just strap it onto the bottom, or I have something called a hang bag that I made. So it is an oil cloth um, compression stuff sack that you can stuff all your gear in, and it has loops on it, and you hang it on the bottom of your backpack, and then everything fits in there. So my whole hammock system sit, fits in there. A sleeping bag with heavy socks and an inflatable pillow fits inside there. And if I'm doing a wool blanket thing, I can just tie that on the bottom with my bedroll straps and I'm good. So it's like, it's all covered literally. It works out really well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe. And um, if you're bored, go back and watch my whole videos, hit subscribe, hit like for this one, all that good stuff. And until next video, stay safe. And if you can stay in the woods.